welcome to this video. Today we are going over some of the best spells in the early game. And just a note for you that these spells are like really the early game spells because I want to cover all the things below the class level 5 because there you will get your first real power spike. And I want to show you what you can use until then, which is good and which is fun to use. So let's go. So the first spell is Chromatic Orb. One of the best spells in my opinion because you can use it basically in any situation. Because you can choose between the elemental you want to use. You could use it as a thunder damage, as a fire damage or whatever. Because if you hover over the enemies and you see for example that he's fire resistant and maybe for whatever reasons you have a few fire spells, you could still use Chromatic Orb and you could use the thing which is best against the enemy. So one of the best spells in my opinion. Love it. The next spell is Magic Missile, which is basically just a spell you, or I like to always have with me to just make sure that I can land a hit if I need it. Because with this you can shoot three magical darts, split them on the enemies or all on one and you will hit him with all of the three darts. And this is just a good way to ensure that maybe you finish off an enemy or something else. Next off we got the Cloud of Daggers, an amazing spell in my opinion to use in specific or tight areas where there are choke points. You could just use the spell, move it there and as long as the enemies are in there they will receive 4d4 slashing damage up to 10 turns because it is a concentration spell so as long as you hold the concentration they will get damage. Amazing spell. So the next one is kind of a situational spell but it is amazing if you have enemies which wear metal weapons or armor because if they do you could use this spell to give them the force of the hotness because their weapon or armor will glow red hot and they either drop the weapon or they gain disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. And you can then even go up to them and take their weapon. If they dropped it you can just pick it up and they don't have their weapon anymore. And another thing if the creature is still touching the metal you can use a bonus action on subsequent turns to deal another 2 to 16 fire damage and force the creature to let go or receive disadvantage. It's just you know it's an all in all good spell for just enemies with some metal on them. So keep that in mind. So the next one is Spiritual Weapon, where you can summon a floating spectral web that attacks your enemies alongside with you. And this spell is really cool because you can just summon it firstly as a bonus action and then it will come into play and has its own turn where you can just attack the enemy and even if you don't hit them you can just load with it a little bit away and draw the attention to this weapon so maybe the enemies attack this one instead of you. Basically just a cool weapon to have because you can also choose what kind of weapon you can decide along a few options and choose the one which suits you best. Cool spell, all in all. So the next one is Guiding Bolt and this one is pretty cool because firstly you got a lot of damage potential with this one and the second one if you hit you will even get advantage on the next attack roll against this target. Up to two turns, so keep this one in mind, a pretty good early game spell in my opinion, just use. So the next one is Moonbeam. It's kind of similar to the Cloud of Daggers but it does a little bit more damage. You will also place it on a little area where when enemies are going through or are inside getting beamed and receiving duty then of radiant damage. It will stay up to 10 turns so pretty good spell also for tight spaces or choke points so keep that one in mind too. So then the next one, probably also one of my favorite spells, which is Thunder Wave. Not because it is like the strongest spell in the whole game, but it is just fun to use and it can be really strong because you can use it as a wave of thunder. As th that's basically it. You, it is a wave of thunder which you can throw enemies away. Throw them off cliffs, throw them anywhere and they will just die if it's high enough. So it is just an amazing spell. So let's go over to the defensive sided spells. Where I would like to right start off with, in my opinion, the best spell, the best healing spell in the whole game, which is 8. Because 8, you can heal your allies for 5 hit points, but you will increase their hit point maximum by 5 points. So every time you are in your camp or you're long rested, whatever, just Use the spell right away because then the whole time you will have 5 extra hit points which is amazing. Until your next long rest and then you will cast it again. Really really good spell. So continue with the healing spells. There we got two spells which probably most people know. 
or used already, which is firstly Healing Word and Cure Wounds. And I have to say both are not bad, but Healing Words is better in my opinion because firstly it is just a bonus action and not an action like Cure Wounds and you can cast it from a distance instead of close up. So now of course it always depends on which situation you are in, but in my opinion Healing Words is just like the spell to go because you can, you can even revive teammates from a distance and so on and with Cure Wounds you just are a little bit more limited and you use more resources to cast it. So that's just my opinion. So the next off is Shield of Faith, which is also a pretty nice spell to have because you can protect the creature from attacks and increase its armor class by 2, which can be pretty nice for example for a Gale, which is a wizard and has a low armor class, and you give it to him and until the next long rest you will have this shield. But keep in mind that this is a concentration spell and if you for example are in a city and you want an ability check and give someone guidance, which is also a concentration spell, this will vanish. So always keep in mind that this is a concentration spell and it will vanish if you use another one. But basically a good spell to have and nothing more else to say. Next off is also a pretty quick one which is Bless. Bless up to three creatures, they gain 1d4 bonus to attack rolls and saving throws. Basically just a nice spell to cast at the beginning of a combat and as long as you hold your concentration again you will always have a bonus on your attack and saving throws. Can enhance your battle, can help you hitting those higher percentages onto the enemies. I use it pretty often just in the beginning for the battles. I like it. Keep it in mind if you never used it before. Good spell. You can also reverse all of this because with Bane you can give up to three creatures a penalty of a 1d4 to attack and saving throws. So this is just the same spell just for the enemies and in a negative side. Just to mention this one too, also nice to have. So the next one is Mage Armor. Basically this one is the same as Shield of Faith, just a little bit different. It protects the target from attacks, increases its armor class to 13 plus its dexterity modifier. The cool thing is here, it is also until the long rest, so you could basically just combine Mage Armor and Shield of Faith together and pump up that armor class and basically getting pretty hard to hit without any equipped armor. Pretty fun to use because you're, you're fighting in your panties, but also nice and strong. So our last chapter of course has to be the cantrips, because there are some cantrips which are amazing in this game and you have to use. And we have to start right off with Eldritch Blast, which is like probably the best cantrip in the whole game, which deals 1d10 of force damage and at level 5 and at level 10 you will get a second and a third beam. And at Warlock level 2 you will also get Agonizing Blast, which will add your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals, which just makes it even more better. So this spell is just a must have if you're playing Warlock or if you're multi-class in the Warlock, just take it. Next of Guidance. This is like your all-around cantrip, which you will just have all the time if you're going to the city, if you and if you try to pickpocket, if you try to, I don't know, just win an ability check. It is like your cantrip to use, just take it with you because it will help you in so many situations. Next off we got Shilele. Shilele. I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, but who cares. Your stuff or club becomes a magical. It deals 4 to 11 bludgeoning damage and uses your spellcasting ability for attack rolls. So this is basically a druid spell which is which is pretty nice for close up attacks to improve your stuff or your club and deal some melee damage. And note something which is really cool because you can even induce your torch with this because your torch is a club and then you will even deal an additional 1d4 of fire damage so this is really cool and the last cantrip i'm going about is vicious mockery because what else do you want from a cantrip you can insult an enemy i mean i just think it's funny so that's that's because it's in a list but it's also not that bad of course i mean the damage isn't that good but you can give an enemy disadvantage on its next attack roll, which isn't that bad and to finish off this video I want to go over three other spells which I just like but they are just occasional useful and, and they are just some occasional spells. The first one is command. For example in the first chapter to the first big boss you could go up to him and command him to, to drop his weapon and then you could just pick it up and you have his weapon and he is weaponless. So that is pretty funny. You can also command him to groan and yeah it's it's I mainly would. I mainly use it for dropping weapons from enemies because it's fun. 
So the second is C invisibility. So this is basically just that's what it says. If you use the spell, you can see invisible monsters. You can see invisible things if you go along this world. Sometimes useful. So keep that one in mind so that you just know it exists. But the third one, which I really like, is Misty Step because this one is absolutely amazing. At least for me, it happens. From time to time that I go some places where I just can't get anywhere closer because maybe I don't have a character which is strong enough to jump that distance so you can just use Misty Step and teleport yourself upwards. You can teleport yourself over a specific distance to the other side of the, of the abyss or something else. So this one is really cool. Keep that in mind. Good for movement, good for positioning and so on. So that's it. That were all the spells. In my opinion, are amazing to use in the early game. If I missed something, you can of course tell me. This is not a video where I tell you that it, those are the most OP spells in the world, but those are the spells which I used and I thought are amazing to use and are strong to use and will be enough to get you to the stronger spells. Keep in mind that this is like the place to level 4. At level 5 you will get some amazing other spells, you will have this this strength boost in each class, so those are all the spells below your class level 5, so just keep that in mind, so I know that I don't include it like Fireball or Ice Storm or something else, so just so you know. But otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you had some time with this video. If it was good or bad, I don't know. Let's see. And have a nice day.